everyone. Welcome to another Monday movie. I'm Mr. Blue Summers. So this week is a little bit of a cop-out. I've actually had a very intense weekend. So what we're going to do is remake one of my oldest Monday movies where I did a very quick introduction to subsurface scattering materials in 3D Studio Max for Mental Ray. Now the primary issue was that the video footage was so grainy that you couldn't really see what I was doing. So this time we're going to take it a little bit slower. We're going to look at some of the initial steps that everyone needs to take when they're working with the subsurface scattering material. And then from there I'm going to let you experiment with the material. So I'm working here with the Stanford Buddha object. Um, it's, a, it's based on a model so it's got a lot of tessellation to it. It looks really great. This is a typical uh, photographic setup. I've got only one light. It's very sharp. Let me take a render so that you can see what, what the setup looks like. So you can see that the lighting is very sharp. And we do this because when we apply the subsurface scattering material, at all these light borders, we'll be able to see the effect of the subsurface scattering, and that'll help us to adjust the material. So in order to apply that material, I've started off with Bood Flesh, and it's already applied to my statue. I'm going to click on where it says Ray Trace. I'm going to scroll down. And for this example, I'm going to choose Fast Skin Material, SSS. Subsurface scattering, for those who, who are new to this idea, has to do with light going through skin or going through um, some transmissive material. Um, milk is a great example, skin is a great example, wax, like for a candle, same thing. It's light going through a solid material. So without going into, into too much of this detail uh, right off the bat, we start off with some of these quality parameters. You're able to adjust these to speed up or increase the quality of your renders. The bump shader where you can apply a bump map. Um, what else here? Unscattered diffuse color. So in, in this slot you could put in a bitmap like your character's skin material and then you'd be able to have some control over the actual appearance of the skin. These three scatter colors, the epidermal, subdermal, and back surface color, these control how the light penetrates the character's skin, how the light penetrates this material. And you're able to change the weights and the radius, which is the degree to which that this subsurface scattering really you know goes deep into your into your character into your model the weights very quickly should never go above one you don't really need to do that if you find yourself setting a very high radius or a very high weighting it's because and I'm gonna to get to this in a second you need to adjust your scale conversion factor so very briefly we've got the two layer specularity and reflections so this lets you adjust the glossiness and specularity of your characters of this material of your character's skin and you are able to apply maps to any one of these which is really great it gives you a ton of control over how this material looks in the render so finally we have the advanced options and this is this is what I was talking about earlier the most important spinner on this entire material is right here the scale conversion factor the way that subsurface scattering is integrated into studio max is that all of these values are somewhat absolute they're not relative so what you need to do whenever you're using a subsurface scattering material is tell studio max how big your scene is if you're using a very large scene you would otherwise have to use very high values in the rest of this material but instead what we're going to do is adjust this one spinner and the rest of the material will be scaled accordingly correctly so let's take a render I haven't changed any parameters in this material and we'll see where we're starting from so again without changing any parameters in my material I'm getting a pretty discouraging result I don't see any cool subsurface scattering effect um, keep in mind I don't have final gather on and I don't have uh, caustics or GI enabled this is just a straight lit render so the issue here looks to be that out of the box the scene is too large for this material and in fact if you look down here you realize that my my Buddha object is you know something uh, 30 or 40 feet high 
which is not a realistic size for subsurface scattering. So when our scene is too large, we need to turn the scale conversion factor down. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and set it to, um, to uh, 0.15, so 15%, whereas originally it was at 1, which is 100%. Let's see what that change by itself did. Hmm. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. There's a very subtle reddening effect right here by the Buddhist thumb. That's the subsurface scattering starting to show through. It's very subtle at this point, so we need to continue to adjust our scale conversion factor. But for now, we're starting to get a little bit of that scattering effect. Let's adjust it one more time and then take another render. I'm going to set it to 0.05. So it's now three times uh, what it used to be. Let's go ahead and render again. Wonderful. I bet you can see it now. So in the very thinnest sections of this geometry, the light is starting to really penetrate the material and show through. You can also see it here on the Buddha's forehead and on the side of his face. It's got this glow to it. So out here, that's the back surface coloring, the deep red color, and I'll show it to you right here in the material. Right here, back surface scatter color, that's this right here, this red color. His face and his head, on the other hand, are this epidermal and sub-epidermal scattering. That's what's taking place right here. So, I encourage you to go ahead and play around with this material just like I did all those weeks ago. This is a really fun material to play around with. And now that you know where to start, again, with the scale conversion factor, you should always start here. Now that you know where to start, you can dive in and not waste any time. Try playing around with some of these reflection and specularity settings. Try playing around with scatter weights and scatter colors. See if you can turn the skin material into a, a jade material, or into a marble material, or into a milk material. I strongly encourage you to play around with this. That's the best way to learn. Until next week, take care and happy rendering. Thanks for tuning in to another Monday movie. You can find all of my Monday movies as well as tutorials, resources, and downloads on my website, www.mrbluesummers.com.